Let's take a look at the NPC within Galaxy Warriors. So see right now I'm kind of flying around with them. These are all NPCs except myself here uh, that are flying around and battling. So you might be wondering, well, how does this all work? So let's take a look. I have a place file right here titled NPC Behavior. And this is where I have all of my decision trees that I build for the NPCs. So a decision tree is pretty simple at, the, at a high level. Basically, you have a, a starting position and you kind of flow through uh, making decisions as you go. Uh, and so I'm just gonna start and go through each one just to kind of show uh, what it is. And um, by the way, before I begin, this is using the B-Trees plugin. This is free, it's incredible, highly recommend it if you're making uh, decision trees or behavior trees here. Okay, so first one to start, um, which is just kind of, uh, I don't know, it literally doesn't do anything but go to the idle one. It doesn't. It probably doesn't need to exist, but here it is. So this goes to my idle tree. So if I jump over to idle, um, you can think of each tree as a state. So uh, a behavior tree is different than a state machine. Um, they both serve their purposes, but I, I sided more with wanting a behavior tree and then using the trees kind of to indicate what state it's in. So you can think as the idle tree as a whole as an idle state and what it's doing while it's idling. So when I'm idling, I come to a selector node. And what a selector node does, it's kind of like an or statement that it, from left to right, it's going to check each um, line it's going to and it's, it's looking for the first one to come back as successful. And once one comes back as successful, it stops. Now, if none of them come back as successful, it bubbles up the failure um, upward but if one is successful, it bubbles up success. So um, that's kind of a way to think of a selector as kind of an or statement. So our first one over in the far left is an is dead check. And all we're doing is checking, well, is our entity dead? If it is, um, this is gonna return a success. Think of that kind of as a true value and it'll stop. Again, it's, it's an or statement, remember? So if, uh, if we run into a true statement, and an or it stops so as you can see if it's dead it really doesn't do anything you just bubble up to the beginning of idle and that's it so it's kind of a, a, a fail safe that if, if we're dead um, we shouldn't be doing anything we should just continue idling and not doing anything all right but let's say we're not dead well then this will come back as a fail and then it'll go to the next one which is the go home check and this is a sequence so a sequence is like an and statement so we need to get through every single one, one by one, in order for this node to succeed. Um, and so from left to right again, we have another selector and then we have uh, two tasks. So at a high level, our go home sequence first checks, should we go home? And we decide whether we should go home. And if we do, that'll be successful. Then we'll find a friendly planet to go to. And if we find a friendly planet, then we will go home we go out to this other tree here to move our NPC. So our go home check is pretty simple. We decide if we should go home and get a selector, so think of it as an or statement, if our health is low or our ammo is low. And just to look at the implementation of these, these are actual modules, so I can click edit, and I can see that I'm just checking right here. If my health is less than 25, then return success. And again, I'm asking the question, is my, is my health low? So if a success comes back, that means my health is low. Um, so this will bubble up as true, and then it'll go and go home. But let's say it decides, you know, I don't have low health, I don't have low ammo. Um, it'll bubble up as a failure on the go home check. So then we're back at the decide action again. So we're not dead, we don't wanna go home. So we'll go over to our next one find a target check. So in this one, we're gonna to try to find a target to pursue or go to, um, and then go to it. So our find target implementation is pretty simple because it's it's 
not implemented here. We call out to our NPC file to try to find a target to pursue. And if we find it, we return success. So if we find a target, then again, it's a sequence, so it's like an and statement. We'll do each one. So we'll find a target and we go to it. And that's it. That's that's our idle sequence. So at a high level, if we're dead, we do nothing. Um, if we need ammo or low health, we go home. Otherwise, we try to find a target to pursue. That is our idle state. So let's go to one of these other ones. Um, the move one is next up in terms of this tree. So let's go to the move decision or uh, behavior tree. This is probably the most complex one that's here so far. Behavior trees can be much more complex than this, but for what we're doing with this is the most complex we've got so far. So this one's kind of tricky, but on our move statement, we have a uh, sequence right here. So we're going to wait for our target to be reached. Then we're gonna to check to make sure we're actually near that target. And then we're gonna decide what to do with that target. So within our target reached section, we have a lot going on. So let's look at that. Um, let's kind of avoid some of this top level stuff and, and move down. So, well, at the very least, we're doing a repeat here. So we're gonna to continue to move our ship until we are either near our target, our target is too far away, or we find another target that's closer that we can pursue. So that, that's kind of the high level of all this logic. And we have to do some inversions and stuff like that to make sure that we're bubbling up our results properly. But the high level, again, all we're doing is we're continuing to move our ship toward a target until one of these three items um, come true. All right. So once we have either gotten near a target or lost our target or found another target, then we go over here and we check if near. And this is just kind of an easy way for me to only continue on if this is near target worked. And we'll see here, I set this is near variable here. Um, so if it's not near, that means either our target is too far away or we found another target and we can just abandon this whole move section and start over. But if we did get near our target, then we'll move on. So then we're near our target and we can decide what we want to do. And then right now we have a few different options. Do we want to attack? Do we want to heal or get ammo? Or do we want to collect scrap? So we check if we want to attack simply by, well, do we have the should attack key set? Um, and if so, we attack. If we want to get health or ammo, we check if we're near a planet. If we do, we get health or ammo. And otherwise, we see if we want to collect scrap, which is actually the exact same process as the attack section because collecting scrap is just a matter of shooting the scrap. So really, the collect scrap and should attack could be collapsed into one. They don't have to be separate, and that could be a simplification of this process. Okay, so let's move on to... The attack section. So let's imagine we, we moved our NPC to an enemy, we're near that enemy, and we decided we want to attack that enemy. So now we are at the attack node. So let's move into GW NPC attack, which is surprisingly simple, right? This is it. Um, so all we do is, well, first we check if we have ammo available. So we just check, do we have ammo? And we invert that because this is a selector. So we if this comes back as true as that we do have ammo, then it would just stop. <laughs> so really, we're trying to see if we don't have ammo, um, that, so we invert it. So if we have no ammo, it'll be successful and stop. But if we don't have no ammo, so in other words, we do have ammo, we'll move over to the fire sequence. The fire sequence is really simple. We just decide our bullet type, and then we fire. So our deciding bullet type is very simple implementation. We choose a random number between zero and one. If it's greater than 0.9, we shoot a rocket. If it's greater than 0.6, we shoot shotgun shot. Otherwise, we use our standard laser shot. Pretty simple. And then we have our fire shot node, which goes out and actually fires our shot. Now again, you can see we're delegating this task out to our NPC object because it's quite a more intricate implementation to get that working. Um, but nonetheless, that's what we're doing.
And then last but not least, we have our heal and ammo section. So this happens if within our move section, we're near a friendly planet that we wanted to go to, then we want to heal or get ammo. So this one's actually not quite implemented yet, but I'll go through the graph at least. So we're gonna continue to repeat as long as we're safe and we have ammo or ammo or health to get. So is safe is just a simple check because if we're at our home planet and we're healing or getting ammo, we don't wanna just become a lame duck and then get shot at. So we have an is safe check that's gonna go out and again, it's not implemented yet, but what it will do is check if we have any nearby targets that are really close. And if we do have any nearby targets that are close, we can determine, well, we're not safe. So we should break away from trying to get ammo and heal and attack. We need to get out of this state. We need to change states here because we're not safe. Now you can see a, a problem with this though is if we're not safe, but we don't have any ammo, then what are we gonna do? You know, you could, you know, make this more intricate and decide, well, I should flee then, I should run away instead of try to attack. And maybe I'll do that, but for now it, it, it doesn't make that assumption. Well, well, I'll add more later. But let's say we are safe, uh, then we go into this add health or ammo section. And if we have, um, and then we go through the health sequence. So if we need health, then we add health. And then otherwise, if we need ammo, we add ammo. So pretty simple. Now one thing I'd like to change with this is it's limited to only one of these tasks at a time. So for instance, if I have zero ammo and not much health, I have to completely go through that health sequence before I add any ammo. And that again could be a problem with this is safe task because I might want to prioritize one over the other. You know, if I know that I have zero ammo, I'm completely vulnerable, I might actually want to delegate toward, um, or rather prioritize getting ammo first before health. So right now it doesn't have that logic. And honestly, what I'll probably end up doing is just kind of getting rid of all of these nodes and just making a single task that implements that logic more appropriately. And that's it in terms of the behavior tree. Um, again, it all comes back to start and continues on. So the way that looks in the code, if I go to, I'm just gonna try to find it. Here we go. So within my client NPC file, I create my behavior tree and that's that GDW NPC start um, tree that we looked at, which again is very simple. It's just as this, just kicks off the idle state. So we'll create that behavior tree. We'll create kind of a state object that it uses to, to carry on state. And then every uh, step, physics step, we go through and we run the tree. Now the tree might actually return a still running state which means, you know, for instance, if I go over to my move state, I have a big repeat section right here where I'm continuing to repeat this node while I'm moving. So I don't want to continue to fire my, uh, my behavior tree if it's still running in the background. So again, thankfully it returns a result. And if the result is equal to three, that means it's still running. I believe like one is fail, two is success, and three is running. I, I don't know exactly, but something like that. Um, and so I can just flag that. So tree running, and I just check if it's three. So next time it comes through this update loop, if it's still running, it just stops. It doesn't try to run the tree again. So it just kind of waits until the, the tree's ready to go again. And then we re re repeat. So it's just looped. We just continue to run our tree over and over and over and over. Um, and that's what gets our ships to fly. So at the end of the day, what we have is a pretty cool implementation of some, um, I, I don't want to call it sophisticated AI. It's not very sophisticated, but it, it does what you want it to do. You know, this, you can see this ship is boosting to get to its target fast. It's turning and you'll see that it even turns sharply <laughs> Well, there, it just collided. It'll uh, turn sharper if it needs to turn quickly and, and get out of a situation. 
So, you know, they're, they're far from perfect. They don't do collision detection yet or anything like that to, to make sure they don't run into things like me, like that. Um, but for the most part, they they work pretty well. And this is an implementation that I made in, in, in just a day. So it's, it's pretty cool what you can do with behavior trees, uh, given the amount of time to think through how to design them and implement them.